Think I'd rather be alone in the nighttime. Think I'd rather smoke a bowl than a FaceTime. Think I Welcome back to Faded Truth. Before you do anything, like and subscribe. This show is sponsored by Cannabis Talk. Every Monday through Thursday, make sure you're tuned in on the hottest 24 hour radio network with your host, yours truly, Angie Ma, and DJ Memphis Hollywood. Tune in at 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central. Download the Mixler app and search one word mainstream radio. And today I have the beautiful Domo Monster 7 on the show. How What's you feeling? Up? What's up? <laughs> the sex industry mogul, guys. I like it. We're going to talk about some things today. The name Domo Monster comes from your real name? So Domo is a childhood name that I've been called for a lot of my friends who know me. I I was a dancer, so I used to break dance. So uh, Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto, that's where they got it from. And um, it just stuck. So everybody knows me as Domo. Like when... where you spin on your head and shit? I mean, that's like windmills are like <laughs> hardcore. I didn't have that upper body strength, but I was doing like inverts and stuff. So you've done uh, porn, mm -hmm. camming, now OnlyFans. Also yeah. stripping as well. Oh yeah. Okay, so when did you first get involved in the sex industry? I first got involved when I was actually uh, 24. I didn't actually want to do anything in the sex industry for years. Like I was a, I'm a choreography dancer. I did gymnastics. I was um, solely like in like dance technique type of thing. Okay. So I did. Um, after high school and stuff, I got into um, promo, uh, modeling, and then I got into go-go dancing, and then I actually got into booking. So I was booking other go-go dancers, other models for, you know, conventions, uh, uh, events, it could be car show events, whatever regular stuff okay. like like not sex i mean it's <laughs> sexy but not that type of sexy right? right so i was very strong um when we did go-go dancing um so i did go-go dancing at all the nightclubs in la i did it in oc so i was normal What's and i transition? was and i was like oh like and of course you're getting you're gonna get pushed like a lot of people are gonna be like oh hey um you know be a little sexier right. you know and I was so like, oh, I don't, I don't have to do none of that. <laughs> um, and I was actually, um, I helped a lot of girls. I was promoting to them. I'm like, you don't got to get naked. Like, we could work this. And wow. Then I started working at, um, I did go-go dancing at the raves at the at the festival. So EDC, Nocturnal Wonderland. You get a lot of pictures. You know, social media was really new about like MySpace was like the shit <laughs> and. And we were the badass bitches on MySpace um, because we got all these cool pictures from the festivals. But that shit is not going to pay the bills. So I was in this kind of weird funk where, you know, I was getting older. I was getting a little bit, you know, I wanted to do better things for myself. And I was like, I kind of hit this pinnacle, like peak of success but it really it wasn't success like i was making like like okay money but it wasn't good and then i broke up with my boyfriend and then i was like you know what i was like i need to move out i was like i need to get away from him so i re i responded to this like fetish ad which i didn't even fucking know anything about fetish i just saw that they paid money so i was like and I, I remember I was on my way to get another tattoo and then they called me. They were like, hey, um, you want to do this photo shoot? You're going to get paid 30, 300 bucks. I'm like, what? I'm going to get paid 300 bucks today? And they're like, yeah, can you make it? I'm like, I'm on my way right now. <laughs> so I went and it was um, it was this fucking weird. I mean, it was actually cool. Like it was I can tell these were like high end people of L.A. that I never like cared for um and the whole theme was this angel dark angel theme and he used a lot of these like fetish like you know uh pro accessories and stuff like that but i had no idea what so wait what was the photo shoot were you like holding paddles and like whips or like what yeah is it? so they were putting me in outfits like it would have been latex outfits um leather right. um uh and it was it was really nice like the aesthetic was sort of like almost fashion and like art, you could see artsy. you could see the art in it but at the oh time, no you were i like... saw the art in it but i i mean if you would have told me <laughs> what the fuck i was doing no i didn't know jack shit and i was i was in this weird 
phase. I was like, I'm trying to change my life. I need to start hanging out with some new people. So I just told the guy, I was like, look, I'll, I'll assist for you, whatever you want. Like, let me know. And he was like, okay, all right. So I helped assist him for these other models that would come and shoot. And these were like beautiful girls, okay? These were porn stars. These were some uh, just regular models. I mean, it was weird. It was like... I was intrigued because I was like, whoa, these are some hot ladies. This is some cool stuff. Like, it was just so fascinating to me. They all knew each other. They had a relationship. I was like the new kid, oddball, but I was like paying my dues, you know? Right. So he started teasing me, and he was like, yeah, you know, he's like, once you once you earned, uh, I'll, I'll let you come to a party with us, you know, if you if you can hang. And I was, you know, I had gone to raves. I had been fucked like, up on psychedelics. We did a big day. There was these girls from New York. They were porn stars. And this was crazy. So they were here for a weekend and he was going to like host them around. And when I got there, they were camming. I was like, what, what are you guys doing here? And they're like, Oh, we're webcamming. We're like, we're making money right now. And they were just having fun. They were like partying. They were like, I could hear the tip bells going. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, wait, <laughs> I was like, you guys came from New York? Like, you guys came here to do this? They're like, oh, no. They're like, we're fucking, we're porn stars. We, we got a, they we're like, we're here on vacation. I mean, we did some work. We did some shoots. But this is us, you know, we're just making some money before we go out because we all went out. And, um, yeah, we're just, like, having fun. We're kicking it. And I was just like, well, I need to hang with you, <laughs> ladies. Then the party started. So <laughs> this, this was the most wild shit. So they had these really private, low-key sex parties, in a sense. But it was, like, using all these fetish toys that we'd been taking photo shoots with. You know, it started to, like learn what all this shit does he had me like go through the wardrobe like dress everybody up and then he told me to get dressed and i was like oh okay so i'm joining the party like that all <laughs> right then all of a sudden like these hot guys start showing up and i was like uh okay i was like <laughs> all right so so i'm just chilling you know i'm i'm, I'm meeting everybody cool. yeah. and then this this girl she was just like you know, you can fuck anybody you want here. And I was like, uh, oh, okay, I'm just chilling. And uh, this girl, she like starts sucking off these three dudes. Like, like three dudes? Three dudes. Three dudes <laughs> had their dicks out. She's, she's sucking them off. And then, um, you know, the girl's like, oh, let's go watch and stuff. And I was like, okay. I'm like, and, and mind you, I work with very conservative girls at this time. These were girls that are gorgeous, you know, they're models, but they're like, no, I don't do that. I don't, right. I don't, I'm, I'm not that type of girl, right? I, I'm, I was shocked. I'm like, oh my God, I've never hung out with girls that were, you know. Sucking three dicks at once. Yeah, about their <laughs> slutness. They were like, bitch, like, you're, you're cool, <coughs> but I'm going to go do this. The rules to the party was that the guys were the Trojans, okay? So they were human dildos. There is no, like, intimacy of we're going to, like, you know, the girls making out with the guys. It was not that. It was we're using your dick. What the fuck? And you should just be privileged to be here. <laughs> and also... Can what they I touch them while they're getting head? Like, you know... Like no. Okay. So Absolutely the not. Rules? So the, the rules... So if the girl guides his hand to do that okay. then that's what they do but they are just there are they like a sub then or are they like less than a sub are they it just like wasn't a fly on it, the wall it, the it wasn't there yet <laughs> but they are basically a sub to the master this dom guy this is his house okay these are his friends you are the guests and what you are is furniture okay you're you're a statue <laughs> You're not even a fucking person. Oh. That's what it was. Who signs up for these? But the men, though. Like, who signs up for that? So uh, <laughs> what I learned, so this was a place where the girls could get together. It's a safe place. These guys were screened. You know, everything was set up. 
and also it's where they can safely practice their sexual like you know abilities so are they recording in here at no, all or no 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 these just are all private practice. it's okay. very fun it's very like you know um uh really fun group of girls just kind of like pushing their sexual limits kind of exploring things um i grew a bond with a lot of girls and we would push ourselves like we would see a girl do something like crazy and we were like oh my god that's fucking hot like <laughs> go bitch so now you you're watching the porn you're in or not it's not even porn yet you're just at these parties i'm just at these how parties. do you get into porn <laughs> that, that's the next step <laughs> i was hanging out with the porn girls and they were like you know you should just do it like just do porn they're like you you're so good at the parties but i was like oh my god no i was like <laughs> you're still on i was your like i could i could never i could never I do that <laughs> I'm like, because i was like thinking of all these like nightclub people these like professional people then when i started thinking about it it was just like Yo, I'm in survival mode, okay? Fuck fuck these people who, yes, I've had a good relationship with them. Well, they're not going to pay your bills. But are they paying my bills? Right. Are they going to advance me? Do they have opportunities that are going to make me level up? No, so fuck it. Right. I'm going to do it. So I did it. And, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it, it wasn't... <laughs> Um, Do you remember the first person you had sex with? Yes, yeah. I remember the whole thing. Okay, it I'm was... going to tell you the one I saw. I oh, saw. <laughs> oh, and I'll tell you what was going down on this. So please Shout let me know. Shout out to Nappy for giving me that video. He loves you. <laughs> Say hi, Nappy. Hey, Nappy. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> he sent me the one where you're like a schoolgirl. Oh. And then he's like, can you, or you're like, can you help me with my essay? And he's like, something like, can you suck my dick? And you're like, that will be for three essays. <laughs> my sister's hot friend. Yes. Tyler Nixon. <laughs> What's funny is that guy um, was very scared of me. Um, was he? he? Was very intimidated but very cute i'm kind of a dominant type of person yeah it was really funny and it was cool i made friends with like the director and um yeah i get blazed i get fucking high as shit and uh when i go in there it this is kind of what you got to do on performing like are you gonna be that little girl and it's like oh, hi um i'm i'm here to do the porn, so whatever you guys want to do, like, let's do it. No, you're going to go in there and say, okay, hi, I'm Onyx Muse. I'm fucking you today. Um, So that camera, like, when you do your performance, what's it going to look like? Are you going to look like that little bitch? Right, or are you so going to look like a, like a fucking so you're woman? Like an who, yeah. You're an actress. And you are, sometimes you do got to outshine the guy because they're going to act and they're going to be... Um, and I don't want to say aggressive, but they're going to, you know, they're they're going to put their best foot forward and they're going to try to right. make it seem it's, like they're plowing you down. It's like the guys I feel like for guys mental in porn is it like they're already so big on themselves. Right. Exactly. And then you put them in front of a camera with their dick fucking some hot girl and they're like they just it has to be like mind blowing. It, it, it <laughs> almost becomes a competition. Right. And, and, you know, all respectfully <laughs> in porn, it's kind of like. Okay, you're gonna put the moves on me, so I'm just waiting. But it's it's cool. Like most of the time, we meet, smoke a joint, get to know them, um, and then just kind of okay. So the plan is, right, I'm gonna have, I'm like, gonna put the camera down, <laughs> and then I'm gonna fuck you for like this amount of time, and then we're gonna switch position, and then we have to stop, switch position, switch the camera. Now let me ask you: Are you actually attracted to these people? like no. at, at any time were you like because i'm confused like for me right yeah i can't stay wet if i'm not attracted to somebody right so what do you guys are you actually like putting lube in between like what's going on no if, if, I, or I, you just I, constantly I, don't stay wet i fuck myself a lot so i could get myself <laughs> going so um no but yeah there's gonna be times that you're not interested who cares who that person is you just need to do them you need to do your job you need to make it look good you want the director to love you. And then do you do like, do you put things in your ass? No. So I, um, and the, this is why porn did not fully work out for me. <laughs> I wasn't into the anal stuff. I didn't mm -hmm. want anal. I, I had that. And they push, 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 push. They push you to do that where eventually right. some girls, they give in. 
And I'm, I mean, I'm sorry. Look, I'm I'm cute, and I'm seeing what they're doing. All the cute girls, they are running through those assholes. Okay, <laughs> I I can't. Like I, you know, can you squirt? Yes, I can. Did you teach yourself? I did. Okay, I did. How do you teach yourself to squirt? You just got to be really into it. But if you are, so when you're putting your fingers in in you. Instead of just focusing on that in and out thing, um, if you tickle the top of your inside, right, like the right little there, pouch yeah, thing, yeah, mm-hmm. inside and feels a little squishy, keep rubbing that. That actually makes your pussy really wet. And then you need to like rub your clit, just really get in there. And I swear to God, it'll start coming. And you just do it on your own, you do not even on, with guys. Always on your own. I mean, yeah, maybe a couple guys made me squirt, but for the most part, um, I need to. I, I'm I'm learning what's going on down there. So, um, and I think it's special to for a woman to squirt on her own. <laughs> like I made myself squirt. I literally don't need men for shit. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every lady should squirt at one time in their life. You invested into your own studio to help girls. Yeah, I'm getting everything down i have to get my licenses and to play um but and what are you going to do in the studio all types of content so i when i first started it camming was the focus that was my only thing now uh only fans was on the rise and that was another thing that cam girls were doing because they were getting a lot of their uh, customers from there to their only fans you know covid hit it went through through the roof like in the beginning like I actually just had a baby last year so when all this was going down like I was like having my baby and then I was like oh my god I you know there's a lot of girls that were turning to sex work online um like camming and stuff but they didn't know how to do it it's it it is sort of like a foreign language like as long as if you know how to work the room on um you know webcam you'll be fine, but as a normal girl who's just signing on, it's gonna look like another language that you don't know. And I took time, I studied what all these different girls were doing and I put my own method to it, but, and so I I started to try to make videos for webcam, for girls like webcam tutorials. But then this OnlyFans really took over and I actually started learning that, um, you know, how I was hustling on webcam prior to covid is way different after covid because a lot of the guys weren't spending money as they were because okay. you know they were getting hit with yeah everyone's everyone's uh dealing with the covid stuff so then i was like well shit okay if only fans is the thing let me go deep on this shit and so now i'm opening my studio up to not just webcam girls or girls who are interested in that like even if you're a content creator OnlyFans creator, if you want to learn OnlyFans, if you want to learn different things. That's so nice of you. With the OnlyFans, can you make money on OnlyFans without being naked? Yes. Okay, what's the secret? It's about consistency, okay? So if a lot of girls think that they're going to come on, oh, let me just take a little picture here or there, send it a little uh, four-second video. Let me try to sell that. You're fucking crazy, okay? You need to be serious about this. You need to have a niche. You need to have a fucking plan. Right. You need to go in because if you're not going to show sex, you need you need to understand that you're competing with girls that are actually sticking shit in their asshole. They're right. fucking dildos. <laughs> they're, doing, they're doing it all. So you need to, you know, be strong. Now you can... Just take pretty pictures, teeth, what about implants. Feet pics? Oh, it's like a whole department. Yeah. Right. Fuck have you yeah. ever sold feet pics? Uh, yes, I have. I have a lot of feet, guys. It's not like, it sort of is my specialty. It's one of them. But it's not, it's not the main thing. I actually need to focus more on the feet. But I just watched a video because, you know, I'm always learning. I just watched this video of this girl who, sell, who strictly has a feet page. She's... She was telling you that how you like put put in your feet in different positions and then also <laughs> to like, you know, when you like kind of stick your feet out of the shoe, but it's still sort of on <laughs> almost like teasing. Like that's what they like. Wow. I was like, wow. OK, this is easy. I need to change up my feet <laughs> strategy. Where's your feet going? Are they going to go and do some some stuff out in the world you know are they gonna be walking on food are they gonna like what are, what are you gonna do with right. these crazy you gotta, feet you gotta, what are these crazy <laughs> what are these crazy ladies doing that's I found my calling know. guys <laughs> 
I already got diamonds on them. We're good. They're going to love these feet. <laughs> you know, the power about OnlyFans that what I'm learning as someone who came from the industry, when you're in the industry, a uh, sex industry, um, like doing scenes, you're you're not doing stuff that you like. You're, you're going and they are giving you like this you know protocol of okay this is what this scene is about this is the director's thing and this is what his fan base is doing and what's cool about only fans is you, now the creators the performers can create what what they really want to be right. performing and um they can do crazy stuff they could do cosplay cosplay is huge um i actually did pregnant content which i'm, I'm moving on from that was a he found that, that too i didn't i didn't watch it well no I, hey i'm about it all right okay did i was i just gonna, he was like she wasn't fucking anybody though was like no i was actually i so this is my thing i was like okay i'm pregnant i'm about to have this baby and my girlfriends were like girl you need a cam when you're pregnant and i'm like oh what what? why and Big they're like you're fetishes, gonna, right you're gonna make so much money so i kept hearing that and i was like all right let's check myself so i went on and these guys i mean once you start to announce it like they come crazy like the little guys that are requesting lactation stuff and you motherfuckers what? are still on my mini vids <laughs> trying to ask me for <laughs> lactation videos yeah so like that was a hard limit for me i was like <laughs> You want me, you want a video of me squirting milk out of my tit? I'm like, oh I barely God. even know how to do that. I'm like, but <laughs> why am I going to do it for you? So I was always kind of a bitch about that. Like, um, I was like, I'll do a lot of different things, but I don't know. That one's just too much because I like was wanted some nipple milk in the camera. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, dude, it's weird. And you know, some of the girls, like I have little bitty boobs, so I don't, I don't got that much milk to be sh <laughs> sharing for videos. But um, some other girls, you know, they make a killing off of that. Um, the belly button thing, that that's a huge one. They like videos of you, like, putting oil on your belly button, just rubbing your belly button. I just can't believe there's this many weirdos in the world. Yeah, yeah, like, I know. So, like, so you now you're a new mom. I'm a new mom, How old's yes. your baby girl? So she'll be one year. Um, and do you love it? I love it. I love it. She's my little buddy. Um, it's crazy. It's taught me. It, I'm learning so much new stuff. And then I have to go and be a mom at like, you know, dropping her off at daycare and being <laughs> around all these other moms and stuff. What do you think's like the biggest shock about motherhood? Because you have like nine months to think about it, right? And then you have all your friends that have kids telling you like, this is what it's going to be like. And, you yeah, know, and I, then it's like, is it completely different once you're actually doing it's, it? It's completely different. Once it happens, it's just like, you, there's nowhere to go. Like you, you got to do it. You got to handle, you got to um, get in there. So it's a lot of learning. I'm learning about like her diet right now. I'm sleep training. I just, I when it's her bedtime that's my time so um but she's doing really good and she's she's been such a good baby so nice. i'm really i'm really lucky now that you have a girl yes if she wanted to get into the industry would you be okay with it no so the thing is is that um what i'm doing i'm sacrificing this to you know myself to do this because i don't want my child to do this as much as shit that i had to deal with i'm the reason I'm starting my business and I'm doing this so my children and my uh, family members who are girls don't have to resort to this. Um, but what I'm also doing is I'm training them that, you know, they don't have to go that route, but there is still things you can do. Dancers, hello, we could be brand ambassadors for, you know, if it's lingerie companies, if There's it's just so merch, much content if it's cannabis. You can, it's... like, make now, you know? Like, because when we were younger, there it wasn't like this either. No. Like, now that there's so many different ways you can put your content out. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the fuck you're doing. You yeah. know what I mean? It's crazy. Like, and it's just about connecting with people from places and ways that you didn't even think that you were going to connect with them. So, um, what's cool about OnlyFans is now what I'm learning. So, like, even if my daughter was like, hey, um, I want to get into this, I'm going to go, H how about you try this route where you don't got to do nothing? You still make it artistic. It's fun, but you're able to keep your boundaries. Boundaries are really important in this work. And, um, but it's also really good because girls who don't necessarily have to do like the sex acts, 
they could still benefit from this business. Not and you're doing making it. like informational content for them as well, right? What, yeah. What are you doing like a so book? Or? I, I wanted to do some type of tutorial things because I brought a couple of my girlfriends who, you know, were strippers or stuff out here in Vegas or girls from LA. I try to bring them to the studio to just train them, I, I, you know, because I genuinely want to help them. What I'm doing here, I don't have to drink if I don't want to. I don't have to, you know, be around somebody if I don't have to. I can just be in my space mm -hmm. and... I just need to be on this camera and I need to make this money without having to do that. They're into eyes, they're into hair, they're into lips, they're into these features all over your... These are all dollar signs. These are all different, uh, you know, areas of income. So you want to showcase that. It's good to learn the right way to do it. And that's what I really want to help. You know, I've been very fortunate to meet great people, to learn from those successful people and put my own um, knowledge to the test. But I also want to help people because, you know, there's a lot you, of girls yeah, you want to who... help. You, you help a lot of people, though. You sound like you've already helped a lot of people in your life and that you're going to continue to. So you yeah, just have a good I, heart. I actually... I, I actually like it. It's it's good. I like the process. I like seeing other people become, um, you know, uh, financially fit for whatever they want to do. And then there's there's that argument that a lot of guys are like, oh, like why would I why would I go pay for your OnlyFans when I got free porn? And it's like because that porn star that you're jerking off to. Uh, you don't have her phone. You you can't sext her. You can't message her and ask right. her for something. And you're probably actually like, do you, are you? You're actually more into it doing your OnlyFans, right? Because yeah. you're not like you said. You want to fuck yourself. You could just fuck yourself, and you're having a great time. Yeah. But like in porn, you're acting. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So you get more like authentic. Yeah, content. and it's and so and it's kind of cool because then you can instead of just kind of making something and hoping that they like it, these guys can you can ask them what they want to see and then they tell you. They make your job easy. You're like, "Oh, you, you like that?" Now, did you work at Rhino? Oh, yeah. So, I danced when I left LA and um, I came, my friend was like, I'll get you hired. And so I was like, cool. Now I was a go-go dancer for years. So dancing did not scare me. I saw performing. you uh, dance, uh, teaching John on Reju. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that was a funny situation yeah yeah john is a really good friend of mine i just i talk is to him, i talk to him every day yeah oh my Mo god most of the time every day yeah that was hilarious so, so he's came he came out to vegas how do you get on like the rude jude show did you know john before <laughs> like what happened eminem had the station shade 45 so we were listening to it for a while and i would always listen to their show and this john he just sounded like a dork like they were always talking <laughs> shit on him <laughs> And one day, so one day I was like in the car, I was like driving, like going to lunch or something. And then um, it was John's birthday and they were like, John, I'm going to get you an escort. We'll get you an escort. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, fuck. They were like, I don't know. I don't want to spend my money. They were like, nah, never mind, John. I, I'm not going to spend my money on you. Like you, you wouldn't even know what to do. And so they were like totally picking on him on his birthday. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna DM their page and I'm be like, yo, what's John's, uh, uh, you know, hit, hit me up. I'm gonna smoke him out. And it was funny. So I DM'd them. I didn't, I never knew them. And um, they were like, oh, really? You want to smoke him out? They're like, here, here's his number. And so, I, uh, <laughs> I called him, and he answered. And then I was like, hey, um, <laughs> meet me at this location. Uh, I'm gonna smoke you out. And he was like, oh, okay. And, and he just agreed. So he came. And I was like, John, I'm like, did you really just come here? I was like, he had, no, like, idea he had no idea who I was. I was like, I was a stranger. I could have killed you. And he was like, well, he's like, oh my he's God. Like, and now you talk to him all the time. Yeah. And so I smoked him out. We like hung out and stuff like that. And then, and I was totally like, my, I, I was, I was just getting off on like the fact that I was mind fucking him. Cause he was like, whoa, you're kind of hot. And 
you you just genuinely wanted to smoke weed with me like he was like kind of like looking around like what's up like this like this. so now he gets scared once yeah he gets, yeah once he gets there so he now was, he's like he was about scared it. in a way but we like talked and then um i sort of told him about my world and then he asked me to go on the show and i was like oh whoa like you know we're just i just met up with you to smoke weed i'm like Are you je- you really want me to go on the show and he's like yeah and i was like all right, let's do it. And and that's how it came to be. But me and him were like new friends and it wow. was so funny. And my profile actually blew up. A lot of their audience came to my page and then I converted them into cam customers. So, <laughs> nice. um, so it works out. <laughs> Shout out to you, Jude. So he was my inspiration for the podcast. Really? Yeah, because I was always listening to Sirius and I'm like, I want to do this. I want to talk shit for a living. Like, I, let me try this. So that's how I even started it was because he, he inspired me. It, <laughs> when you're with him in person, like, oh, my God. Like, the first time that I went, like, I think Jude was, like, sniffing some, like, vitamin. And I was, like, I, they were, like, okay, yeah. And then he was, like, it was just so creepy. <laughs> you shut out, Rude. So let's talk about your um, new podcast. Yes. So Green Room Radio? Yes. Okay. So uh, we just started a, a podcast on YouTube, um, and we're trying to get it out. We may go on serious, but even if it's, like, something that we just do on ourselves, that's what we're doing. So um, it's me and two other hosts. We all come from different worlds. Um, uh, one of my co-hosts, True, he, was, he worked with Eminem. So he comes from um, the hip hop community. He knows a lot of different people who musicians Our other host. He was a DJ. He's like the number one remix producer. Um, and he a lot of these big DJs like Diplo and Skrillex. And um, I mean, everybody's playing his remixes at these big festivals. So he comes from that world, and I'm coming from the adult industry. So I like to talk about the whole business news. <laughs> um, I like to kind of give an insight of what's going on, what's the update, and then, um, you know, future goals is I'm, I'm going to have some of these girls, performers, um, content creators. Um, I'm going to do interviews with them, help promote their stuff and just kind of nice. get a feel for what they're offering. So you're also involved in the cannabis community? Yes. Okay. In what way? So I have been in the cannabis community for a few years back in LA. I used to bud tend at a bunch of dispensaries and then I managed a dispensary. From there, um, I met a lot of different people in the trimming community. So I started doing trimming um that was fun and then um i met a couple brokers and then i met farmers and i actually went to oregon and i like harvested like wow. this fucking crazy when you like land we hit this like grocery store area and then we drove to where the farm is and it's about like an hour and a mm, half just in the out, middle of nowhere right <laughs> and um so it's cool, but what was really creepy was there was no Wi-Fi, there was no signal, and then the guy, he had like one like Ethernet little USB that can connect to like one laptop at a time. Mm-hmm. I mean, we did the whole process like we had to trim the the buds from the trees, and then we had to like have them dry, and then. It was cool. It was like this whole system. And there's these people from Chile. They didn't even speak English. And we didn't speak what they spoke. But we all like we would play like dubstep. And then they would play us Afrobeat. And we were like changing like songs. And we were smoking on all this dank ass (laughs) weed like every day. And then they actually um, he would buy groceries. It was and they were very um, about like all organic food. So it was like all these great meals the actual trimming phase like that was the exciting part because that's how you um you know know how much money you're going to make by uh, how much you trim so you fill up the bag so we were just trying to fill up so much bags <laughs> all right well i appreciate you being here thank you so much yes. i'm so glad i got to do this yeah so we will look for all the upcoming things everyone and check you out had to come on my podcast yes i'll be there yeah we're gonna be high we're gonna smoke with oh yes we are <laughs> Always, always. All right, guys, until next time. Peace. Thank you so much. You been sober, nigga. We ain't never sober. Hit the 215, take a beast trip for it. Take a nap in the sand. I could dig for your handshake. Close case, no recess for you. Fuck a mouth, I ain't finna run.
run a goddamn Think I'd rather be alone in the nighttime Think I'd rather smoke a bowl than a FaceTime Think I'd rather play a tune while I write rhymes And then maybe roll a few in the meantime